We spare their time and uh, coming to MIT School of Communication, uh, I'm sure that the session which we are going to have will be very interesting for our students. Ms. Christina Lee is no ordinary woman. She is the head of Ambassador Network at Post Writer, an organization that helps journalists to easily collaborate across borders. I had a small, very brief discussion with Christina during the lunch period and I could judge that she would be a perfect person today to speak on what the topic of discussion that she has chosen to. She is very clear in her ideas and her thoughts. She is very well read about the context in India. And I am very sure that you will enjoy her uh, talk today. This is part of our uh, Amity's vision of accepting the Education 4.0, which is in line with the Industry 4.0. I just have two things to say, and then I'll turn it over to the, the people you're here to listen to today. Uh, one, uh, the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. government have sponsored uh, Ms. Lee's presence here today, but she does not speak on behalf of the government. However, she's a free citizen, and she is allowed to say whatever she wants. Or the content has not been reviewed or restricted in any way. So uh, we hope you enjoy what she has to say. I think it's going to be a very uh, lively talk and lots of discussion. So again, thank you very much. Today, I'm going to talk about something um, that is related to the topic of collaborative journalism. As I was introduced, my organization, Host Writer, we work with journalists all over the world to help ease collaboration across borders. So that means that people who want to work on stories that are involving two different topics that involve multiple countries. And probably you can think of some examples of uh, issues just like this. For example, crime and corruption often go across borders because criminals know that police are stuck within one country. And it's easier for them to conceal their activities if they go from country to country. Migration is another issue the environment and global warming, these are all issues that go across borders. And because those issues go across borders, we think that when journalists want to uncover the truth, they also have to go across borders. So misinformation would be information that is false for any reason. It could be false because the person who wrote the story made a mistake, was the wrong day, wrong time, or they were simply misinformed. Disinformation is, however, different. Disinformation is information that was deliberately manipulated for a reason. In the way that rumors, conspiracy theories, and misinformation are spread, we see a common pattern, and this pattern goes a bit like this. It starts on the so-called anonymous web, it moves to closed or semi-closed networks, from there to conspiracy communities, social media, and professional media. So why is it important for journalists to know about this funnel? Because if you're trying to track where things came from in the first place, where a fake idea comes out, if you only pay attention to it once you see it on the mainstream news or once you see it on Facebook, it's already too late. Because at this point, it's reached many, many people. In fact, already by WhatsApp, it's reached many people, right? So it would be important for you to look into these anonymous places where it comes if you want to find out where it's going. Also to find out who is the person that is spreading this rumor what is the intent of this person? Who are they connected to? What are they trying to achieve by spreading this kind of rumor? Are they trying to stoke communal hatred? Are they trying to confuse people? Are they trying to sway the way that you'll vote or what you might invest in? These are important issues to know about if you're going to report on it, right? And if you're trying to uh, make the public aware. This image was altered on the website uh, Reddit. And they said, look, I've altered this image. People go and spread it. So it spread through Twitter, it spread through Facebook, spread through WhatsApp, until eventually the mainstream media caught up to it. 
And when the mainstream media did catch up to it, they wanted to tell people that it wasn't true. So again, we have this issue with headlines. Which are the headlines that work? As you can see, there's a number of different headlines and they exemplify the kind of issues I was telling you about. The first one being the familiarity background of, uh, backfire effect. Those images of Emma Gonzalez ripping up the Constitution. A headline like that repeats the false claim without correcting it. Another one, that picture of Emma Gonzalez tearing up the Constitution is fake. Not bad, but still, you have to read the whole line, and the most important thing that sticks out is Emma Gonzalez tearing up the Constitution. One, uh, one side of the coin, we are seeing that the traditional media outlets are propagating credibility. And on the other side, we are saying that the internet news is promoting sens sensationalism and fake news. So in that case, we should tr trust uh, which aspect? Don't trust anybody. Do your own research. <laughs> What would you do when you're studying politics? Would you just read Marx and then say, well, now I know what it is to think about this world. I don't have to read anybody else, right? No, you would read lots of other things too. You would read Smith, you would read Polanyi, you would go and read lots of different topics from old and new times. My question is that in this new shift in journalism due to digitization, what should young media outlets like us should be equipped with? I sound old-fashioned, but I still think that just like I just said, the same skills are still necessary. Critical thinking, ability to discern uh, fact from falsehood, ability to read people, ability to network. But on top of that, of course, you're in a very competitive field now because people are publishing things 24 hours a day. In this uh, digital world that we are living, uh, according to you, what are the pro features or the positive features of the US journalism and how is it adjusting with today's digital media? On the bright side, I do think that digitalization makes it more possible than ever before to be exposed to a multiplicity of viewpoints and that American journalists are taking advantage of this. To our speaker, Christina Lee, for, her, for sharing her deep insights, and findings with us, a big thank you. I, I have to say a very special, special thanks on behalf of Pro Vice Chancellor Sir to our special, special guests from the US Embassy. We hope you come back to us again and again.